So, you know how I just set up this printer like, I don't know, a few days ago. This is taking forever and I gotta leave in two days and I have like eight more of these to print. So, these printers are great. They're, they're nice and cheap. This one, I think I got it on sale for like 170 bucks. I just got back from Micro Center and it is 9 p.m. so they just closed. I got the Bamboo Labs P, P1S Combo, which is a lot more expensive, but also supposedly five to 10 times faster printing. So I need to move this over and we're gonna set that one up next to it. And we're gonna get both of these printers going tonight. And I can move all this stuff over here. I need a place to store filament. I'm sure that the 3D printing channels have lots of uh, ideas for that. I'm just gonna stick it wherever I can right now. We'll figure out how to sort this stuff out later. I'm gonna move this while it's printing. This is a terrible, terrible idea. Hopefully this is enough space for it. It's set online, 20 minute setup. I don't know how true that is, but we'll find out. How do we pull this out? Are we supposed to use the bag? It, it looks like this is little things. Is that how you do it? Well, that worked. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna balance that precariously and come back up to here. I think that's, this is the back, so uh, lift with your back, always. Uh, it's kind of heavy. Whoa, there's a, oh, this must be metal because my little magnet here was sucking onto it. So I'm gonna give it a little space between the two printers. But let's check out the little guide we got here. It's a quick start guide with tape that rips the paper. It's always annoying. Uh, all the parts. Yes, yes, yes. I said it's the combo kit. Is the thing inside? I hope it's inside. Yes, it's inside. Tool head unlock. It looks like it comes with some filament too. Okay, so we got to take things out of here. This is the most expensive printing device of any sort that I've ever purchased. Before this, the most expensive was, I think I bought a color of a really nice photo inkjet back in the day that was like 350 or 400 bucks. And judging by the fact I own Creality's, I am not a guy who pays a ton of money for 3D printing. And I'm gonna leave this for now. We don't need it yet, and I'll keep it in the bag. I'm not really reading the guide but it did say do something. How does this come off? And at home, I have an enclosure for my Creality, my little cheap one. Oh, this is, okay, that's not fun. It's gonna get all stuck on there. Nasty. How do you get that? How do you suppose we get this door off? This little piece is a little awkward. I don't want to get it gummed up with all the adhesive. So I'll pull this out of here. That way. And that comes off. Okay. Okay. We got that. Let's see what's in the accessory box. Looks like you have... There's a remote control. What the... Oh, that goes up here. It's not a remote. <laughs> it looks kind of like a little Apple remote or something. But it's not. It's just the controller which goes up here at the top with a little touch screen. Maybe a touch screen. I don't know if it is or not. But I'm sure we'll need that at some point. Greases, lubricants, things for scraper, hot end, and extruder. All right, so it looks like we might have some assembly required and a piece of cardboard that has nothing to do with anything. And this guy comes out somehow. There's that. That. I don't know how they packed this in at the factory. How does one get this out? It just says, pull up, remove screws. Oh, oh, there's screws down here. I see. The screws are out. Now this should come up. It will. However, well, there goes that guy. Oh, be careful. What are you hitting on? There's a Bowden tube down there. What am I hitting? Okay, there we go. We're gonna set it aside for now. 
Okay, remove four screws as arrows indicate. Oh, so there's like a little thing in here that just holds things together. And there's some desiccant. Don't eat that. I don't know how I sound, but uh, my mouth is like right up by this microphone, so I probably am very loud right now. It's nice that they have these bright orange arrows to indicate where to do this. That is a beefy fan over there. That's like a PC fan over on the left side. I wonder if, if there's like a built-in webcam. Oh, there is. There's a little camera. That's kind of cute. I wonder if I can hack that thing and use it, use a Raspberry Pi or get Octoprint on here or something. I think this is just for shipping, but I'll save it just in case. Take out the cushioning. This, this light just turned off back here. Okay, take off the cushioning. Ooh, okay. Well, that's the build plate. I don't quite need that yet. I'm going to keep following the uh, actual instructions on here at some point. I see another screw back there though. Let's see what it says. Take out the cushioning, remove the cardboard from the tool head. How is this cardboard attached? The easiest thing is just to cut here. If I just pull it out a little bit. No, oh, it's just kind of plugged in on this side. And then it comes up over here. Like that. Uh, remove the cardboard. Remove the foam from the excess chute. The excess chute? That sounds serious. That's kind of fun. There's a chute for excess. I don't know what that does, but we'll find out at some point. Okay, EMS assembly. Uh, we need to get this thing back down here for now. Boop. Oh, that's magnetic. That's kind of nice. Okay, Mr. Automatic thingy. Now for these prints, I don't need this automatic changing thing, but uh, it'll be nice to have in the future. So, you got, huh? How does it go on here? Does it just sit on top? There's a good deal of static on there. Oh look, they have a little micro SD card included in there. The AMS goes up here. And there's two cables? I don't, oh, there are two cables, okay. I'm gonna take a quick potty break. I guess I just stick it in there and that's it. Can you do multiple of these? There's two six pin connectors up here. I don't know what they're for, but let's do one. Okay, that plug was a little mushy, but it's in there. Spool holder assembly. Why do I need another spool? I'm going to use this guy, I thought. I thought that's the whole point of this thing. Hotbed unlock. Okay, that's that sounds mildly important. Unscrew three screws. Sorry, you can't really see anything here. In fact, why don't I bring the camera over now that we got everything unboxed. Okay. So we're unscrewing three screws. They all have these little orange markers on them. These are longer screws. That's a nice long little screw. This poor little ender over here is like, oh, I'm being replaced. No, you're not. Oh, no. Well, now I need to use the magnetic pickup, which comes in handy. And one more screw back here. This screw is kind of in a really annoying spot. But this is a core XY design, which is different than the ender. The ender is called a bed slinger. It shoots the bed forwards and backwards for the... Uh, y-axis movement and then this is your x-axis and then you have dual z motors on this guy this one has core xy so the, the print head can actually move all around and the bed just goes up and down which is helpful for speed i want to get this stuff out but i can't really do that with this bed in place can i we'll leave that for when the printer turns on i guess okay this little guy okay that cable's in, that's that, the peel, I don't want to use an app to set up the printer, that sounds silly, oh, <laughs> do not remove the protective foam from beneath the hotbed until after initial calibration is complete, you better get stuff out of here too, remove the desiccant before use, 
So it says remove the plastic bag of desiccant. The question is, does it want me to put the desiccant in there though? Remove the plastic bag of desiccant. I think what it means is remove the plastic or unbag the desiccant. I think you're supposed to do that so that that desiccant actually can work. A little bit was lost in translation there. It wants me to do this app. I don't really want to have an account though. It never told me to plug it in either. And we got a lot of extra tubes here. And this just excess in case one of them breaks. Because that's a lot of tubes that I don't see. I don't see where they... I guess they all go into the mechanism down there. So get power. There's no power switch for uh, 115 or two, 240 volts. So I'm going to leave it as is. And hopefully it doesn't start a fire. Ow! Well, here goes nothing. It's doing things. Next. Next. Set up later. Okay, good. You don't have to do that. You have to agree to terms and conditions. I can't see them, so... Skip. I don't want to do that. Start. It's testing itself now. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm taking that out now. It's doing things. It's kind of fun. There's a lot of grease on the bottom here. Support for PLA. I'm not sure what support for PLA means. It's a lot of fun, whatever it's doing, but uh, this this filament, there's not much in there. I thought, I thought they gave you a couple free rolls. Holy cow. I'm not sure what it's moving around in there, but it's doing something. I'm gonna close this in case it like blasts out a fireball at me. I see lights on all of these guys too. Okay, first print, place at least one spool. It's doing some weird things right now, I tell you what. Oh, look at that. There's it gummed up that side a little bit. That's really annoying, like it's brand new. And now I'm going to have to clean off that gummy residue from the bag that was holding this together. Your printer is ready. Enjoy printing. Okay, a Benchy. This is high-speed PLA. You zoom, you just set it on here. It says you should just put it in. Oh, okay. All right, we're we going. It it does stuff. Well, okay, eight minutes, hopefully. It's warming up. Slowly but surely. This camera's nice and toasty. Okay, first print. Here it goes. Holy cow, it's getting up to 250 degrees Celsius. <laughs> that is a hot, hot end. I normally print at 200, maybe 205. It's squirting some filament out in there. So it's going in a cup. Do I have to empty that cup? Uh, how much filament is it going to dump in there? Come on. Okay, now it's down to 200. It's going back down to 200. I don't know why it had to go up to 250. I guess there's something in the way that it spits out that filament. Oh, goodness. And it's doing the bed shake thing. Uh, oh, yeah, that's the top. Well, that's fun. It has a little, there's a little cleaning thing on there. That's cute. It cleans a little tip off. I don't really understand what it's doing right now, but... Oh, hello there. Oh, 
that that's the door. You don't have to hit the door. Okay, it must be doing must be doing bed leveling now. Okay, well, I'm going to stop it there and then I will tell you what happened. I wonder if it does the leveling before every print or just before the first print. Focus. It's hard to focus through the glass, but uh, yeah, that's that is a little bit faster than that. I might I might actually finish printing this stuff now. That's that's a big speed difference here. So if you need to print things fast, uh, get get one of these or the uh, Creality K1, I guess. There's a couple models that are good, but. Everyone says if you want something that just works out of the box, get this one, and that's what it looks like so far. We'll see how the Benchy turns out. Okay, that was about uh, like eight minutes or nine minutes, and we have a Benchy. It is uh, well adhered, but uh, there it is. That is incredible. I have, I have literally never seen a 3D print that fast. I am not a 3D printing YouTube channel but that was impressive. Okay, well, I'm gonna start printing some other things now. Is that orange? I don't know if I did orange. I think I did orange filament, which, wait a second, that's red. It's funny that that's not a very red kind of red, but anyway, there's my second Benchy of the week. By the end of this week, maybe I'll have like five printers, I don't know.